Last week I posted the first of two videos showing how to rear the larva of butterflies and moths. It's just a basic guide and this is the second part of that basic guide but we're going to look at the more advanced stages of larva, those getting ready for the pupation process and what you need when that comes about but you may well have remembered this container and the 30 or so emperor moth larvae that were a day old at the time I filmed it and that was on the 29th of May, I've just looked it up. We're now on the 7th of June and things have changed a little bit. We're now into larger containers and if you followed the instructions on the last video and you've grown some larva on, you may well have a container like this full of larva. However, the story of these emperor moth larva hasn't been an entirely successful one. Well, as you can see, there's been quite a change in these larvae. They've gone from being about five mil long, entirely black and covered with various hairs and spine-like projections. And they've now become much larger and far more beautiful. These have to be one of our most striking of larva that we have here in the UK and these are quite typical of the Saturnidae or silk moth family of moths known worldwide. Many silk moths have caterpillars that are indeed more spectacular than emperor moth larva. They soon outgrew the square container I showed in the opening clip to this video and moved into these what I think are about four litre square plastic tubs. After a while they were becoming so large that I had to divide them into two groups and it's a good job I did because there has been problems and problems have come with the larva in this particular plastic container and that some disease has manifested itself. I don't know whether it's through overcrowding which is why I split them up into what I thought was a decent manageable group or what whether it was something on the food plant I've tried to keep the food plant collected from a decent source there is some evidence of honeydew on here but the problem started before that and I don't know how many of the larva are going to make it but this is a problem I've had with emperor moth larva before, but they're now approaching the pupation stage and whatever caterpillar you get, it will hopefully also reach the pupation stage successfully. So you need to know what preparations you have to make before that pupation period starts. And one of the first indicators that your larva is about to pupate or is at least beginning the process of pupation can vary. It can change colour, especially in the case of many moth larvae and the hawk moths, they will change colour and become quite different looking to what they have been while they've been eating. But the most common sign is that they will start to wander, especially those larvae that pupate underground or in the leaf litter, they will wander a lot around and around the container that you've got them in. So once you've recognised the sign of pupation, you need to have already prepared for it. Now many moths will pupate either just under the soil surface, some go deep down like death's head hawk moth and convolvulus hawk moth and a container with this kind of depth would be no good at all. It's not deep enough. You need a full size large bucket for 
the larger hawk moths like pivot hawk moth, convolvulus and death's head hawk moth. But for many species, including some other hawk moths, a small shallow layer of soil or peat or moss and then leaf litter on top of that in a container to this depth is often sufficient. But the important thing, because I, I can't show you every scenario or possible scenario, the important thing is that you've done your homework and you know exactly the conditions in which your larva pupates. Now, many moth books, especially moth identification books, will give some basic life history information. It'll say, you know, larva pupate in the soil or in the leaf litter. Some will pupate by fixing themselves to the stems of plants or small branches in captivity. Quite often the lid of the container is used for such a process. But you need to look for the signs. Generally a wandering larva that has stopped eating may well have changed colour, sometimes may well actually give off quite a bit of moisture. Is one of the signs that you need to look for and then you'll know that your larva is pupating. Many butterflies will pupate hanging suspended from a twig or a branch or the top of your container. They don't tend to go underground as far as I'm aware unless somebody's introduced something weird into the country and many butterflies especially in infalids will do this these are the pupa of a very special butterfly I'll show you some more in a minute but your nymphalids and many other species hang suspended the spinner the caterpillar spins a pad of silk hangs by the rear legs and then after a day or so will pupate and morph into these fantastic chrysalises and these are the pupa of the Camberwell Beauty known to Americans I believe as the morning cloak it's an absolute stunner of a butterfly one I had overwintering in the 1980s and nice to have them again a much sought after species and in the UK only occurring here as a very rare migrant usually arriving on the back of easterly or northeasterly winds and these have successfully attached themselves to shed the larval skin and then the pupa attaches itself by the cremaster to the pad of silk and they hang here these are about a week old now so we've probably got about another week to go before Hopefully you'll be seeing the adult butterfly and that will be an absolute belter. These can then be put into an emerging cage as can any pupa but you need to have already done your homework to see whether the pupa that you have will be overwintering in that stage or whether that species of butterfly or moth has a second brood. Some do. So Homework is key and there's no excuse for not knowing the needs and wants of the larva and the pupa that you have in your care. The information is very easily available in books but also now on a number of internet sites. So once your pupa have formed if that pupa or that pupal stage is only going to last maybe two or three weeks, you need an emerging cage. An emerging cage like this, which has another eight Camberwell Beauty pupa in it, all hanging suspended. Emerging cage has to be of a decent size. It is preferable if it's made with wooden frame and many people could simply knock up an emerging cage like this. The bottom is solid wood. Bottom of that cage and some tissue paper and then you can lay your pupa 
onto that tissue paper waiting for emergence or if they're attached to a twig or small branch or grass stem you can securely fix them in here and then wait for emergence now it's very important that once the butterfly or the moth has emerged it's got something to climb up on so a netted sides and top are a requirement and then once the butterflies emerged and the wings have dried you can then release the butterfly or attempt to breed and i'm not going to go into the, the breeding of butterflies and moths so the basic principle once again with rearing your caterpillars through the latter stages of being a caterpillar or larva and then into the pupation period are all reliant on you as a captive breeder or captive rearer of those insects to do your homework. The information is very easy to find and once you've gained confidence with quite easy species like emperor moths you can move on to some of the more difficult species although to be honest all of the nymphalids that i've ever read including these as larva and large toad shells and others have been very very easy but you'll get an enormous amount of pleasure from rearing and it's marvelous to see specimen of your favorite butterfly or a species you've always wanted to see absolutely immaculate straight out of the pupa i can't wait to see these so once again do your homework find out the needs and requirements that your larva will need to successfully pupate and then make plans accordingly You'll probably need some larger containers and for those pupa that remain as pupa over winter you need to make suitable arrangements. Now one of the best ways to overwinter pupa many people will say to keep them in the fridge in the colder part of the fridge in a empty container such as the one I've showed you or a smaller container and just leave them in there with some tissue paper and just check them occasionally but I've had moths emerge around Christmas time that shouldn't emerge until sort of February or March and they've been kept at a constant temperature in the fridge your best way I think your best way is if the pupa are formed on the ground or in the leaf litter replicate that by a large terracotta plant pot to the bottom with coarse gravel then a layer of finer gravel and then some a layer of soil and then a mixture of moss and leaf litter any pupa that you have lay them on top of the soil and cover them over with leaf litter net the pot over completely all around including underneath so that no pests or predators can get in via the hole at the bottom of the pot and cover the top of the pot as well and then I would just leave that in the lee of a hedge or somewhere shaded over winter completely exposed if you want to partly bury it in the soil but give it somewhere sheltered and don't allow the sun to get at it and let nature take its course and then once you get through to about February or March you could perhaps bring those pupa in or, or somewhere nearer to the back door where you can keep an eye on them a lot of it as we're ending is trial and error you'll be successful with some things hatching some things out and some methods will suit some species more than ever but the key things don't be frightened of rearing pupa and the rewards will be the most fantastic pristine insects once they're freshly emerged but pupa once in an emerging cage like this 
I spray once every two days. I don't spray every day because I don't think it does them a great deal of good, to be honest, being done every day. But every other day, and that just replicates the dew that you would get or these would get in the morning. Apart from that, there's not a lot else I can say, but enjoy rearing whatever you decide to rear.